Howdy, guys, and welcome to Cliff Notes. Welcome to season 26 of Big Brother, and welcome to night number one of the Overnight Feed Recaps. Welcome aboard. Now, just like in years past, the goal of these these little uh, shows is to give a quick 15 to 20 minute recap of everything that happened overnight on the live feeds. I stay awake so y'all don't have to. It's going to be a little bit tougher this year because they've gotten rid of the rewind, the the flashback feature. So I caught myself trying to listen to and and keep track of two different conversations uh, throughout the evening. Not easy at all, but we're going to make it work. Uh, I'm looking forward to this new season. All right. Now, I don't know that this needs to be said, but just just so you know, spoiler alert, we are going to be talking about things that have not happened on the TV episodes themselves. So if you only want to know what's happening based on the TV episodes, you may want to hold off a few days, uh, delay a few days before you watch these morning recaps, because we are going to be talking about the absolutely latest occurrences inside the house. So there will be spoilers. You have been warned. All right. Now, this is the first night for the Overnight Feeds recaps, but it's actually day number three inside the Big Brother house. This is the third day during my season. We went a full week before we have the had the live feeds turn on. So we did not have live feeds this year, uh, live move-ins uh, this year. But we got live feeds pretty quick after only a couple of days. So it's obvious that there's been some relationships, some some people talking, some bonds being formed that we missed out on, but not too much. We'll cover them this evening. A lot of what I did this evening was just watching to see who was hanging out with which groups, uh, who seemed the most casual with each other, as we start trying to figure out who's going to be working with who uh, as we go forward this season. All right, what do we know so far in the house itself? First of all, let's talk about what we saw in the TV episodes themselves. We have two people that received upgrades or or at least are eligible for an upgrade in, in their position in the house. And that is Quinn and Mackenzie. Both had the highest scores after voting yes to let Ainsley, the AI in the house, uh, they got the highest scores. We don't know whether Quinn or McKenzie, which one actually won that extra power uh, that's going to help them out. But one or the other has an upgrade. We do know the two players who were downgraded as a result of voting not to let Ainsley into the game and then doing having the worst time scores on the little competitions we saw on the TV episodes. Those two who have been downgraded are Chelsea and Cedric. Uh, both of them... They can't play in the veto. They can't vote this week, but they can still be nominated. Seems like that's a pretty precarious position, right? Well, maybe not so much with this particular group this particular week. We'll talk about that in a second. But neither one of them really are being targeted. It, uh, it does not appear uh, at this point in time. All right, so let's talk about the live feeds. Let's talk about the key things that we've learned throughout the evening. And then I'll actually talk about some specific conversations. But what we do know is that we have an HOH. Yes, the first HOH of the season is Angela. Angela, the 50-year-old mom, the 50-year-old grandmother uh, in the house. One HOH. We don't really know what the competition itself was yet. Uh, but she won it. Congratulations to uh, to Angela for winning the first HOH. Uh, but with power comes a lot of responsibility. And she's towards the end, she's getting a little worried about the fact that there will be blood uh, as a result of having to, to nominate some people. So Angela is HOH. There's people that are referring to her as mama already. So she's certainly taking on the mom role in the house. For some people, some people not real happy with her. It doesn't sound like, as we'll talk about. Uh, no nominations have happened yet. Uh, there's a lot of talk that they think it could be happening tomorrow, uh, but no nominations yet. Now, here's what's interesting. Apparently, there's going to be four nominations. I don't know if it's for the first part of the season or it's just this week. Don't know, but there was mention that four people are going to be nominated. Four people are going to go on the block. That's 25% of the people in this house. Four people on the block. Uh, apparently three of them will be nominated by the HOH, by Angela. The fourth person, we don't really know. I don't know if it'll be Ainsley making that pick uh, or some kind of competition. We just don't know how the fourth one occurs. But four nominations uh, taking place. And apparently there's also going to be two opportunities 
to pull yourself off the block. One will be your standard veto competition. The other is going to be perhaps some kind of an, an AI type uh, battle arena. We don't really know. I heard that mentioned, but it sounds like two different times where you may be able to pull yourself uh, off the block. With three, four nominees, if you pull yourself on the off the block, does someone else go up as a replacement? Is there an opportunity for a backdoor? Or are we going to just see whoever's left after these couple of competitions? Uh, we don't know yet. I kind of expect there'd still be some replacement nominee put up. If not, the HOH doesn't have nearly as much power as most seasons. But it's yet to be known for certain. Uh, we'll we'll fill you in as we get a little bit further uh, into this week. Uh, but yeah, two chances to pull yourself by, back off the block. We also learned that we already have have-nots in the house. That was quick, right? Uh, we already have have-nots in the house. Sounds like first week it's Quinn and Tucker and Cam and Chemo are, are going to be our first four have-nots. Staying in that old Matrix-looking have-not room, sleeping on those hard beds. We haven't seen that room on the live feed yet. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out sleeping-wise. Uh, but we do have our have-nots as well. All right, let's talk about the live feeds themselves. We were told by CVS, by, by uh, Julie Chen, that live feeds would start at 10 o'clock Pacific, Midnight Houston time. I'm sitting there watching the clock, ready to go. Midnight comes. Do we get live feeds? Yes, yeah, sort of. In the form of kittens and rabbits, the animal shelter, as we see. <sighs> Spent the first hour of, of Big Brother 26 season listening to that same theme song over and over again that we've all come to know and love or hate, depending on what you think. Uh, but yeah, it was delayed. We didn't actually get the live feed starting until about 1.15 or so Houston time, 11.15 Big Brother time. I think it had to do with uh, with the Republican convention and speeches and all of that. And It took a little bit longer than we thought, but we eventually did get the feeds uh, of actual people in the house. So the first thing that we saw is a, a big group sitting around the dining room table, a big enough group that there wasn't any kind of strategy going on, just people hanging out, conversing. I heard a couple of people say, I'd, I'd love to go to bed, but I'm not going to be the first one. I don't know what that's like. Uh, but everyone's sitting around the the, uh, di the the kind of the island in the kitchen. Hanging out, talking is the first thing we saw. We did see rather quickly after that, one of the cameras, a couple of the cameras shifted into the, I don't know what we're calling all these rooms yet. I'm going to call it the fantasy room, the unicorn room until I hear differently. Uh, but in the fantasy room, we had Cedric and Brooklyn, and then just a little bit later, Lisa came came in as well. So the three of them talking, it's during this conversation that we learned from Cedric that the nominations haven't happened yet, and that there's going to be four nominations a week, or at least four nominations this week. Remember that Cedric can't play in the vetoes. He can't vote. Uh, so he, he's in a really vulnerable position. Seems like Cedric's playing the game pretty hard as we saw this evening uh, maybe feeling a little bit threatened so feeling like he need, needs to do just a little bit more but uh, not a huge strategy talk it's just interesting starting to see who's talking to who who's going off into the rooms to whisper amongst themselves a little bit start trying to figure out who and what kind of alliances we may be seeing i'll give you a hint alliance talk so far huge big type alliances for me i, I hate these big alliances but the, everyone's trying to get the majority of the house to support them. Uh, and, and we'll cover some of those in a second. All right, another conversation we've got. Mackenzie and Chelsea in, in the bathroom talking to one another. Mackenzie, remember Mackenzie potentially eligible for this upgrade. We don't know if she got it yet or, or even if she knows if she got it yet. Uh, but Mackenzie, <laughs> Mackenzie may be not so happy uh, that Angela is the HOA. She's complaining that she believes that Angela is running the the other side uh, of the house. So it sounds like there's already some divisions that have been formed. Uh, she's throwing Angela under the bus a little bit. Uh, she's saying that Angela is a big threat. I got to say this. Normally, you don't throw the HOH under the bus right before nominations are made because all it takes is one person to go back and whisper into the HOH's ear and you're in trouble. Angela either doesn't care about that or maybe she already does know that she's won a power and that she can't be nominated this week. Not We have no idea what the case is, but she doesn't have any reservations about complaining about Angela and, and the threat that, that Angela represents. She says that they need to get Angela out earlier rather than later. Uh, again, she is certainly 
uh, not an ally of, of Angela at this point in time. In fact, McKenzie is seeming almost a little, uh, dare, dare I say, frantic uh, in, in her conversations. Uh, she seems really worried about Angela's position uh, in this game. At one point, she says, you know, I, I just need to get it all out before I go to bed. Uh, otherwise, I'll never be able to sleep. Well, as of like 530 or so uh, in the house, she's she's still awake. So so maybe she is right on that. Uh, but yeah, she's not real happy that Angela is HOH at this point in time. Uh, she's also not, it doesn't sound like real happy with Leia. She's saying that she feels like Leia is snitching, that anything she tells Leia, she feels like Leia is tight enough with Angela. She's just going right back and telling Angela. So not a lot of trust between McKenzie uh, and Leia at this point in time. A little bit later, we get Rubina and Brooklyn coming into the bathroom as well. So we've got four of the ladies in there. Women's Alliance? I, I don't know yet. It seems like they're all very chummy with each other, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. Again, it's all about watching, see who hangs out with who during these early days. Uh, but we do have the four four ladies in there talking, getting ready for bed a little bit and everything. All right, another conversation that we have going on. This one is, I'm going to call it the... The cloud room, the mountain room, the, that back bedroom. Uh, but we've got Joseph and Cedric in that room talking to one another. It seems like the way they're talking that they've had a couple of days and that these two apparently have bonded with each other. They seem very comfortable talking to each other and discussing and sharing information as well. So I, I think, keep an eye on I think Joseph and, and Cedric are going to, to be on the same side, whatever that side ends up being. All right, Joseph is saying that he has heard different people might go up. He's quick to say, I'm not saying I heard it from Angela, just, you know, different people talking and Cedric, who potentially is vulnerable, say, oh, who, who are you talking about? Who, who, who have you heard so far, Joseph? Eventually, Joseph mentions, says, well, you know, Chemo uh, could be a person. Lisa could be a person. He says, Kenny, I don't know if Kenny's really in danger, but Kenny's certainly worried that he could be in danger. So maybe, maybe Kenny as well. So those are the three names we're hearing. Chemo, Lisa, and Kenny as potential targets, at least according to Joseph. Uh, Cedric is saying that, you know, ah, that's a shame. Uh, Kenny and I, I think Joseph says, you and Kenny are close, right? And Cedric's backing off real quick, saying, no, well, when we first got in the house, yeah, I thought I'd be close with Kenny and we were for a little bit, but I'm kind of distancing myself from him now. So don't, don't worry about me. Don't, basically, as long as Kenny's a target, not me, pff, let him go. I have no problems with that whatsoever. Uh, but Cedric saying, yeah, we're not really as close as I thought we were going to be right now. Uh, he's saying that, that Kenny's in a tough position, that Kenny is doing what he can to hang out with the big group, that he's always in with the big group and he's doing a lot of listening, but unfortunately he's not necessarily contributing a lot to the conversation. She's just kind of there hanging out uh, and that uh, Cedric feels like maybe Kenny's having a hard time uh, relating to a lot of the younger folks and, and contributing to some of the conversations they have. So he's feeling like because of Kenny's age, maybe he's just he's just not quite vibing with the rest of the group uh, just yet. Not a good sign. I know how hard it is, Kenny. I absolutely understand. But uh, yeah, they're feeling like Kenny's just not quite fit in with the group uh, as of yet. Uh, they're also talking about Matt. Uh, Joseph is saying that he likes Matt. Cedric is saying, hey, I'm, I'm fine with Matt, but uh, but I am worried a little bit about the fact that Matt is very honest and very open with his conversations. Boy, is he ever. We'll talk about that. He's He doesn't mind sharing information. So Cedric is saying, I, I'm just, I just have to be careful with Matt because he talks a lot. Uh, Cedric is saying as well, uh, with regards to Matt, that he saw MJ. Now, her name is McKenzie, but it seems like a lot of people are referencing, uh, referring to her as MJ instead. So uh, when you hear MJ, we're, we're talking about McKenzie, the uh, building construction manager from Houston. Uh, so he, Cedric is saying that MJ uh, was wearing Matt's hat, early signs of a showmance. Maybe, maybe not. It certainly is. Someone's wearing someone else's clothes and hats and all that. You never know. It does seem like they are working closely to one, with one another, as we'll hear in a little bit. Showman's maybe not yet, but it certainly is a possibility. But, and Cedric ha, has noticed it. Uh, Cedric is talking about trying to form a big alliance. Again, he's vulnerable, so he wants to try to do what he can to form this big group and make sure that he's part of it. And we're talking big groups. He starts off, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, 
he skipped 10, I think. He went straight to 11. He's talking about an 11 person alliance to Joseph. Uh, what he's basically says at one point is look, if we could get 11 people, then as long as we stick together, we know that we all make it to jury. The only, the five that aren't part of our group, they, they're pre jury. Uh, at least that guarantees us all jury. And then we see what happens after that. So he's thinking big. 11 people is a huge alliance to have in this house but he thinks they can put it together. All right, we've got Tucker in the bathroom talking to the group about slop. Again, Tucker's one of the ones on uh, have not this week. So uh, yeah, yeah, he's going to get to experience the slop experience uh, a whole lot faster uh, th than most people. Uh, so we've got that. All right, we've got a conversation with uh, uh, Angela and Joseph. Now I mentioned Joseph Cedric seeming pretty tight. Joseph and Angela seem incredibly tight. Like, like besties working together on strategies and all. I got to say, Joseph seems like he's got a decent feel, decent handle on this house. No one's calling him out in a negative way. Everyone seems to like Joseph. He's talking to a lot of people. He's got his uh, finger in, in a lot of pots, it seems like, and all of that. Uh, so Joseph and Angela are talking. They're talking about an alliance that they want to form. And, and the alliance would consist of Angela, Joseph, Cam, Chelsea, Cedric, Rubina, Quinn, Brooklyn, and Leah. Probably easier to say who's not in there, but that's nine people. The idea is 16 people in the house. If we get nine, it means we've got the majority. We're good to go. So they're also talking about a fairly large majority of people that they want to bring in and put together. At one point, Angela tells Joseph that she loves the way he plays the game. Uh, and what he's been telling her, that Joseph is her eyes and ears this week. So again, we we see a pretty tight little connection between these two. Uh, Joseph, at that point, serving as her eyes and ears, tells her that Matt had told him that Angela had told Matt uh, that if she got house guest choice on the veto, that she would pick Matt to represent her, to play for her for veto. Angela seems very perturbed about that. She said, I never said it, never. That's lie number one for Matt. Uh, again, she's just not happy that he suggested that she had said that at all. Keep keep that in mind. Uh, so she's denying it and saying, yeah, I never said that. Uh, she does eventually talk about the three people that she's thinking about nominating. It sounds like it would probably be Kenny and Lisa and Kimo, with Kimo being the pawn. And potentially she would tell him that ahead of time. She didn't want Kimo to go home, but it just seems like those are the three that maybe she's settled on. Uh, with Kenny and Lisa being the the primary targets, uh, and, and really maybe Kenny more more than than the other ones. God, the old person always gets in trouble in this house, right? Uh, so she, those are the three that that she's mentioning. Angela mentions T Core and says T Core's not going up now. I'm not ready to bring her into this alliance. She's just kind of an associate. Uh, she says I'm not ready to bring her in, but I also don't want to send her home. And Joseph is fine with that. Joseph says, look, I already told t -Core, I promised her, in fact, that I would not nominate her. Of course, he's not HOH, but he said, I promised that I would nominate her in exchange for her not nominating me. And apparently it has to do with the HOH competition. Sounds like they were competing in teams of some sort. Uh, and t -Core and Joseph were on the same team. So they made this promise to each other. And so he's perfectly fine that t -Core is going to be safe. Uh, and it doesn't force him to to declare size or anything since he already made that promise to her. Let me say, I just don't know how these people have this much privacy. They're sitting here having these long conversations. During my first week or two in the house, you couldn't be in a room for more than 15 seconds before someone came walking in. I don't know how they're getting so much privacy. And as it turns out, we'll find out a little bit later, uh, there are people that are noticing uh, sometimes when uh, when people are gone for a little too long. All right. How do the, let's see, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, Matt talking to Quinn. All right, this is interesting. Matt's having conversation with Quinn. Uh, he, he mentions to Quinn, remember I said that Matt's very free with the information he gives out? Well, here you go. Matt tells Quinn that Tucker had offered Matt a little bit earlier a final two deal. So yeah, we've already got final two deals being mentioned. Uh, and of course, it's not enough that someone offers it to you. Uh, but you you go and tell someone else. You just say yes. You never say no. 
but just say yes, move on, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But now Matt has already told Quinn that a final two deal was offered. He later tells some other people in the storage room the same thing, and he kind of makes fun of the fact that Tucker offered him this. He said, yeah, Tucker offered it to me, and I was looking at the cameras, grinning and laughing and making faces and all of that. He's obviously not taking it seriously. Hold on to that stuff. You can leverage it later on down the road. Matt didn't do that. He's telling everyone that this was offered. Uh, Matt is also telling Quinn that Angela had said that he wasn't going up this week. Apparently, Angela all day long had her one-on-ones with everyone. And according to Matt, he was told that he was not going up. Now, maybe that would change based on some conversations, some occurrences. We'll we'll find out a little bit later, but uh, that's what he says. These two are trying to form uh, alliances as well, figuring out how they can protect themselves. Uh, So they're discussing that a little bit. Uh, There's also a conversation that Leia had offered MJ, McKenzie, had offered MJ and Matt a final three the night previous. So again, Matt's spilling yet another little alliance that was offered to him. Uh, This one offered by uh, by Leia that would have involved uh, McKenzie and, and Matt. Uh, we've also got Matt suggesting uh, at one point that they spread word that Lisa's going up. Uh, now, we know that may be happening, according to Angela. Uh, but Matt's saying, hey, if we if we spread the word that Lisa's going up, it'll get back to Lisa. She'll get paranoid, and maybe that'll you know just accelerate the process uh, a, a little bit more. So they do mention that. Again, Matt just gives out a lot of information. Uh, they've got uh, Chelsea uh, joining the conversation. Uh, just a little bit later. Uh, this is taking place if our call in, in the storage room, I think. Uh, we've got Matt spent a lot of time in the storage room. We've got Matt saying that Cedric is a guy that needs to go. Uh, Matt's feeling like Cedric is is vulnerable and they need to go ahead and get him out while they can. So he's, he's kind of thinking they need to be gunning for Cedric. Uh, they're talking about their own alliance that they want to form, which would be uh, Matt and Cedric and Quinn and... And I don't see who the, oh, and MJ, uh, McKenzie. MJ, Matt, Chelsea, Quinn, along with Joseph, Brooklyn, and someone else. Anyway, it's seven. Alliance of Seven is, is what they're, uh, they're looking at. Uh, Chelsea is saying that Tucker has told everyone else, even though Tucker offered to file two to Matt, she's saying Tucker's told everyone else it's too early for him to declare any kind of alliances. So you're the only one who said anything uh, like that, too. Uh, Matt's talking about how comfortable he felt talking to Joseph, that J- Joseph was just so solid, said he could trust Matt, and Matt's kind of making light uh, of that whole situation and, and how trusting Joseph feels with him. Uh, Leia's talking, saying that that Kenny, uh, that, remember I talked about teams for the HOH competition. Leia seems a little perturbed because she says that Kenny had promised Leia and Angela safety if he won uh hoh because they were all on a team together uh but now that now he's denying it now that he didn't win he apparently is denying that he ever offered anything uh but i'm sure he's hoping that maybe angela protects kenny if there was any kind of possible offer made uh, but according to leia he's now denying that there was ever anything offered uh, of that sort uh they do talk a little bit they don't call it an alliance alliance, but they talk a little bit about voting alliance, which could consist of Matt and MJ and Quinn and Chelsea and Leia. Everyone wants to form alliances, but they don't necessarily want to actually give a name to it and formalize it too much in case they get called out on it. So this is kind of their, their in between uh, on that. Here's it. Remember I talked about private spaces. Here's the thing. Leia, MJ and Matt spent way too long in this storage room talking to one another. Even if no one barges in on you, people notice when you're missing. And, and that happens in this particular uh, point in time. Matt talks about the fact that he wants to create a group of three or four people uh, and that uh, uh, and that Matt can create a group of three or four people as well and they can ride together. I think that was Quinn, uh, if I recall. Quinn would create a group of three or four. Matt would create a group of three or four they each have their little minions that, that'll protect them. And at the end, they'll screw over both sides. and It'll just be the two of them at the end. I think there was some discussion on that as well. All right, let me just say this. Uh, it has nothing to do with strategy. In terms of the sleeping arrangements in this house, Joseph has the best bed in the house, in my opinion. He's in the cloud room, but he's over in the far corner away from all the rest of the beds. He's got a bed to himself, removed from everyone else. 
Seems like a perfect spot. It's the one I'd be claiming if I was in that house. All right, back to strategy talk. We've got Angela in her HOH room. She's already got in the HOH room. We didn't get to see the HOH reveal or anything like that. She's already in her HOH room. She says, I'm getting too paranoid. It happens in the house. She's worried about Tucker and Matt and MJ working together. She's noticed that they were missing from the kitchen. She knows they're in the storage room. And now she's a little bit worried about what's possibly going on uh, with the three of them. She thinks that Tucker and Matt and McKenzie, probably the strong people in the house, are going to be going after everyone who's not so strong. She feels like she is easily one of those targets. Well, we know McKenzie would be happy to go after uh, Angela. So it, it's a it's a worry that is well warranted, I believe, uh, from, from Angela's standpoint. But she's she's noticing it. She's getting worried about that. All right. We've got Joseph and Angela and Chelsea talking a little bit upstairs in the HOH room. Nothing too too significant there. I've got Angela talking to Chelsea, uh, saying that Quinn is going to be part of the nine that, that she wants to pull together. Angela's trying to build her alliance. She talked a little bit about it with Joseph. Well, she's, she's filling Chelsea in as well. Uh, but she mentions again that she feels like Matt is doing something against her. Uh, Angela mentions to Chelsea about these people that are missing. She knows they're in the storage room. She's just really worried about what's going on down there. We already know who she theoretically is targeting this week. Matt was not part of that discussion. But the more he raises her suspicions, the more that could either become a nomination or, heck, Matt could be a backdoor target if he's not careful. You got to be careful about the perception in this house. Uh, Angela is paying attention. Now, you've got to be careful. Sometimes, even if you notice that people are missing, if you tell too many other people and they know that you're going to start monitoring where everyone is, who's missing, who's there, and all that, uh, everyone's going to get a little bit worried about that and not like it. Chelsea may worry that now Angela's monitoring her as well. You have to be careful with that information. Uh, But Angela is certainly paying attention. All right, we've got Brooklyn and Angela in the HOH room. Pretty long, good conversation between these two. Uh, two moms in the house, and they're they're feeling a bond because of that. More talk about this alliance of nine, which would consist of Angela, Brooklyn, Cam, Chelsea, Leia, Quinn, Cedric, Rubina, and Joseph. That's an alliance of nine. Now, Leia has been down in this storage room talking to Mackenzie and Matt. Remember, at one point, uh, it was mentioned that Leia had offered a final three to McKenzie and Matt as well. Uh, Angela doesn't know that, but Angela knows that Leia's down in that storage room. So even though she's talking about Leia being in this alliance of nine, she's also getting more and more suspicious of Leia. Uh, and so she basically has told Brooklyn at one point, says, we'll see what Leia says tomorrow uh, after we everyone gets some sleep. If Leia doesn't come back and spill the beans about what was going on to to Angela, Uh, That may create some issues as well. It does seem in a lot of ways that Brooklyn and Angela may be kind of pointing to a final two between the two of them. They both mentioned working together. If I don't win, I'd love to see you win. The idea of a a mother winning the game of Big Brother seems to really uh, excite both of them. So I, I see these two working together and protecting each other for a while. All right, we're about to wrap it up here. We've got MJ and Leia whispering in the bathroom now remember the very start of this this live feeds uh we had mj talking about how leia was a snitch she didn't trust her well now they've she's been talking to her and matt in the storage room i don't know if she trusts her more or she's still done but we have the two of them whispering in the bathroom i just don't know if they trust each other or they're just going through the motions it was hard to understand what they're saying they're pretty good at the whisper I uh, just couldn't couldn't really follow at that point in time. I don't think it was anything too important, but they're trying to stay in touch with each other. Uh, she is saying that between her and Matt and Mackenzie, MJ is saying between her and Matt and Leia, they have all the connections they need. They know what's going on. They they could do well. So maybe she's willing to take Leia on board, uh, but but we'll see. There There is some trust issues, I think, still in place. All right, finally, we've got Lisa talking to Matt in storage. Hadn't really, not a lot of huge strategy talk that I could pick up on. A little, Matt tends to talk in circles a little bit, and I didn't pick up anything new. But it was Lisa playing some strategy at this point in time. They're talking about who maybe Angela would put up, and Matt's saying, do you think she'd put her put you up? 
Lisa, I don't think, thinks so. She, Angela reported that she, I think, told Brooklyn. Angela and Lisa had talked for a long time in the HOH room. She said Lisa was very positive, acting like they're best buds and all that. Never said, would you put me up? Are you considering put me up? So I think Lisa's assumption is that she's safe. We know that may not be the case, uh, but they do talk about that just uh, just a little bit uh, while Lisa and Matt are talking in the storage room. Again, it's a little bit hard to follow. With that, uh, we still had Mackenzie and Leah talking in the bathroom, but but it just didn't seem like there's a lot of strategy at that point in time. Everyone else in bed getting ready for potentially nominations. Angela's hoping nominations are tomorrow and immediately after that, the veto competition. She wants this done as quickly as possible because she's talking about how miserable it's going to be living in a house with people that she's just nominated. Welcome to Big Brother. That's what it's all about, Angela. It's going to be like that for the next three months. Uh, so just get used to it. So there you have it, guys. The big points for this uh, this first night of live feeds. Angela's the HOH. Four nominations to be made. Seems like Lisa and Kenny and Chemo are the picks. Uh, but certainly Matt's working himself into position to maybe be a pick as well. We already have have-nots. We've got some alliances forming. <laughs> They don't have names. They'll probably all change by 24 hours from now. Uh, but we do see some people starting to develop bonds, so we'll keep an eye on all that. There you have it, guys. Night number one in the books. I will be back tomorrow. What was that, Saturday morning? Yeah, I'll be back Saturday morning to give you all a recap on, uh, on night number two of the live feeds. We'll see how much has changed and uh, what other final twos and, I know, 14 person alliances and stuff have been formed. But until then, guys, have a great Friday. Welcome to Big Brother Season 26, and I will talk to y'all again tomorrow morning. Until then, SKD 143. Cheers, my friends. Bye.